I had a conversation with nine Jehovah's Witnesses at the same time and I'm going to tell you exactly what happened and what I wish I had asked them at the end of the conversation that I plan to ask them next time I see them. So I was taking my dog out for a walk and I saw a couple of young guys, probably around 20, across the road going to a door and I thought, are they Jehovah's Witnesses? I thought they're probably salespeople. And then I saw another two guys come from another house and join those guys and I thought they've got to be Jehovah's Witnesses. So I picked up my dog in my arms, walked across the road, went up to them and asked them, are you Jehovah's Witnesses? And they said, yes. And I said, can I ask you a question? I said, now imagine right now if a car hit me and I was laying here on the side of the road and I had three minutes left to live, what would you say to me to give me an opportunity to be saved? And these guys were like looking at each other. Uh, the oldest was 20, the youngest were, they were in their teens and they were just sort of smiling, looking at each other, surprised that I'd asked the question. And then the older guy sort of, who was quite a young guy still, took the lead and he said to me, that's a really good question. He said, I would say, cry out to Jehovah for help. And I said, but that's not really a message that can save me, is it? Do you believe in salvation through Jesus Christ? And he said, yes. I said, so do you believe there would be an opportunity for me to be saved in that moment? Or would it be too late? And he goes, well, only Jehovah knows your heart. I said, well, if my heart was genuine, if I genuinely repented and I put my faith in Jesus, I cried out to him, could I be saved in that moment or will, would it be too late? And he said, well, if you were genuine, I believe you would have the opportunity to be saved. Now, I told them that, I, that I'm aware of their doctrine, that there's a resurrection that they believe of the righteous and unrighteous and, and people will have an opportunity to be resurrected back to the earth to prove their righteousness. Um, so I said, according to your theology, then you, you do believe that I would have the opportunity to be saved at, at that point? And they said, yes. And I said, that's very interesting because I spoke to someone and it worked out it was from the same kingdom hall as these people not long ago that said it would be too late at that stage because I had rejected the gospel message previously in my life. If I hadn't, I would have the opportunity to be resurrected and prove my righteousness here on the earth at a future date. But if not, it would be too late for me. And the young guy said, no, I don't, I don't believe that's the case. So that was interesting. Now, a couple of other younger people and a couple of middle-aged uh, women came up into the conversation and an older woman as well. So all of a sudden there was nine people there. And I said to them, okay, so I have a question for you then. Do you believe in salvation through grace alone, through faith alone, or do you believe in salvation by faith plus works? And I made the distinction between works that are meritorious in salvation, they earn our salvation, as opposed to works which are the evidence of someone who has been transformed as, as a result of, of being saved. And um, they were thinking it through and they're like, oh, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, and all of a sudden they turned to the older woman, like she was the expert with all the answers. They all looked straight to her. And I said to her in Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, it says we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest no one can boast. Do you believe that we're saved by faith, grace alone through faith alone or do works earn our salvation? I made the distinction to her and she actually understood the distinction, which a lot of people don't. And she said, I believe it's very clear that we are saved by grace through faith and the works are the evidence of a person who's truly saved. This is a very different answer to what I've got in the past. I'm going to come back to what my reaction was and how the rest of the conversation went. But first, I really had wanted to move in, in, in a bit of a different direction, but I'd run out of time. We were talking for a little bit and I knew they had to keep moving. I wanted to move on to the topic of the Trinity and the deity of Jesus Christ. Obviously, that's one of the central disagreements. And I wanted to communicate how the Bible shows that there is one God, which they would agree with, um, but that the Bible calls, demonstrates that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. And there are a number of verses which support this. I would have loved to specifically focus on the deity of Christ and to show them how there are traits that are attributed to God alone or Jehovah alone, but these same traits are also attributed to Jesus Christ. There are even verses specifically about God, which are then in different places applied. Those very verses applied to Jesus Christ. 
and to demonstrate how only the Trinity can accommodate the truth of Scripture, that there is one God, but that the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, as three different persons, not three different gods, three different persons in one being, one Godhead. There is an inconsistency, a contradiction if you don't hold to the Trinity because of these particular verses. But I didn't have the opportunity, so next time I'll get into that. But anyway, coming back to the conversation. So um, when the lady said this, that it was very clear that it were saved by faith and not by works, I was shocked because I hadn't heard a Jehovah's Witness say this before. And I was actually a little, a little bit caught off guard, to be honest, because I was going to preach the gospel of grace. And I knew that I didn't have any time to move on to another topic. So I actually finished up the conversation and exchanged numbers with one of the, the young men there. But after I left the conversation, I thought, oh, that is what I should have asked. And next time I plan to ask this, I wanted to ask them, if you believe in salvation by faith alone, then can a person come to a saving faith? by simply reading the Bible on their own? Or do they need to belong to your organization and have the watchtower interpret scriptures for them? They would have had to have said that you have to belong to the organization because that's what they believe, that salvation is only found in the Jehovah's Witness organization, that is God's organization. This is one of the marks of, of any cult, exclusivity of salvation through a particular religious organization. Then I would have loved to have quoted 2 Timothy 3 to them, which talks about all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, reproof and correction and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work, that nothing outside of the Bible is required. They may have said, well, you need that to be interpreted for you to understand it correctly. To which point I would have gone to 1 John chapter 2, starting at verse 27, but the anointing that you received from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you, but as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you abide in him, that as we abide in Jesus, he teaches us. We don't need any man or organization to tell us the truth. We can understand it through the word of God. And I would have demonstrated that you don't believe in faith alone. You believe that you have to be part of this organization. And of course, they believe in a whole bunch of other requirements too. But this conversation was really friendly and it was, it was just really um, genuine. And, and, and it made me think to myself that of the verse in Ephesians 6, that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And it made me realize that, yes, the, the cult, the organization, the manipulation and control, control structures are evil and satanic. But many of the people involved in this are victims to some degree. They've been conditioned. Yes, they're responsible for how they respond to the truth. But at the same time, I can feel compassion for them knowing that they've been indoctrinated by this cult, this 19th century invention. And they're reading everything through the lens of the watchtower rather than actually through getting the word of God and just reading through it and, and coming to the conclusion that you would find if you read through the word of God without that eisegesis. So... The one thing that I would say to anyone that is a Jehovah's Witness, I want to put a video up on the screen. And this is a video on the Trinity and the deity of Jesus Christ. And it's going to show you so many verses and how they link together, how they cross-reference. And I just want you to look at this particular video and just be honest with yourself and ask yourself the question after looking at these verses, maybe what you've been taught isn't true. And it's going to show you where some of those teachings of the Watchtower are in error. So I'm going to put that up on the screen. I'm going to put it in the um, pinned comment as well. Would love to get your thoughts on this video, friends. Please leave your comments below, and I look forward to talking to you very soon. God bless you.